Good evening, everyone. Thank you for attending Kern Council Government's 2022 Regional Awards of Merit Ceremony. My name is Bob Smith, and I am back by popular demand, Kern Cog's chairman for 2023. Tonight, we honor several outstanding individuals and organizations that have demonstrated leadership, compassion, and dedication and making their local communities and the entire region of Kern County a better place to live and work. And I love celebrating all the good work that happens in Kern County. People have a passion for their communities and for the county as a whole. Our award recipients this evening prove that it only takes one individual or one organization to make a significant difference in the community. They do this with programs that have the power to transform lives such as Kern County's Probation Auxiliary Helping Hands program that provides essential clothing and hygiene products to incarcerated youth, or the partnerships established between Michael Dillenbeck and the Kern County Public Works and John Parks of Kern Water Bank Authority to surmount tremendous hurdles in an effort to complete a long-awaited bike extension, long-awaited for me, along the Kern River Parkway, and the commitment a Maricopa resident named Cynthia Tonkin, who settled there in 1973 from her home in Istanbul, Turkey. She embraced Maricopa and has consistently fought for numerous projects to help improve this little town she's called home, and she brought the whole town with her today, and that's great. Fortunately, Kerncog is not the only organization to recognize the important work performed by our award recipients. Tonight's honorees will also be receiving certificates from the Kern County Board of Supervisors, California Assembly members, Dr. Jasmine Baines and Vince Fong, State Senators Melissa Hurtado and Shannon Grove, and Congressman David Calaveo, and Speaker of the House Kevin McCarthy. Mayors and City Councils from the cities of Arvin, Maricopa, McFarland, Shafter, Taft, and Tehachapi, and our Board of Supervisors, Mr. Couch and Mr. Scrivener, please stand. I would like to thank the hardworking individuals from Kern Council of Governments that make this program successful. As you check in, you met Rochelle Invina Jayasiri, a regional planner with KernCog, and Vanessa Enriquez and Jacqueline Aquilar with Providence Consulting. Suzanne Campbell right here, sneaking by. Nope, that's Becky. <laughs> <laughs> Helped organize the presentations you will see tonight. Without these members of our staff and the assistance of a consultant, this program would not happen. Let's give them a round of applause. would also like to acknowledge the creative work of the employees at Kern Government Television who have helped us develop this year's presentation highlights the program and individuals being honored for outstanding achievements. The regional awards are again being recorded and will be replayed next month on Kern Government TV. This gives us an opportunity to share the work of our honorees with all of Kern County. What really makes this event special is that our recipients can celebrate with friends and family. So thank you all for coming to provide your support to the honorees and to celebrate the wonderful gifts they have bestowed upon us. Now let the presentation begin. The City of Bakersfield has made it a commitment to grow the quality of life for the citizens that call Bakersfield their home. And this is most apparent in the work done this past year through the Recreation and Parks Department. After identifying several parks that were in great need of rehabilitation and refurbishment due to usage and environmental exposure, the department focused on a plan to improve playgrounds, sports courts, 
shade structures, and various park amenities. Through a new purchasing process, Rex and Parks released a request for qualifications to find the best design slash build vendor to address the needed enhancements. This process enabled city staff to thoroughly vet the best vendor that fit into the goals of the renovation plans. Within a 16 month process, Recreation and Parks was able to replace playgrounds that were well past their useful life with new modern ADA compliant equipment. The entire project was funded through Measure N, also known as the Public Safety and Vital Services Measure. The project fulfilled the goal of enhancing amenities throughout the community to improve the quality of life and attract visitors. The achievement of the Recreation and Parks Department has brought a new approach that has expanded from not only project improvement, but also the development of a new culture for the city and people of Bakersfield. The central focus of the department to have fun and get stuff done has become their mantra for meeting the needs of the public by getting projects, programs, and partnerships done so we can all have fun. We congratulate the City of Bakersfield's Recreation and Parks Department with the Regional Award of Merit for Local Government. Accepting this award is Rick Anthony, Director of Recreation and Parks. And Rick Anthony is doing a great job for the city and we're so glad that he has come back home. Thank, Thank you, you, Rick. Here you go. And I think we're going to do our picture first. Thank you. Thank you. Leadership 101, stay up here, Fidel. <laughs> Take none of the credit and 100% of the blame. The credit really belongs today to Fidel Gonzalez. He has been with our department for 30 years and started out as a temporary laborer. And he personifies what most of us in this industry are about. We certainly don't do it for the salary we don't do it for the accolades like this, but we do it because we know that it makes a difference in people's lives. So I would like to give this award, at least certainly, a tribute to Fidel Gonzalez. Thank you all for your service. The history of the American Legion goes back as far as 1919 when it was chartered by Congress to serve as a patriotic veterans organization. Focusing on service to veterans, service members, and communities, the Legion evolved from a group of war-weary veterans of World War I into one of the most influential nonprofit groups in the United States. Today, there are over 13,000 Legion posts throughout the world, with Fellows Post 63 and Taft being just one of many. Following the celebration of Post 63's 100th anniversary in 2021, Commander of the Post, Gary Summers, noticed that activity and participation had severely dwindled over the years. He was coming to the realization that the Post was hurting to the point that they were spending through their reserves just to keep the doors open, and at that rate, he may have to prepare to close the Post, something he was desperately dreading. Ed Gaither is a local advocate for all things Taft and has a special affection for the American Legion post as his father was a member. Ed did not want the Legion to have to shut its doors. He realized that the post cannot and does not live off their memberships, so fundraising and participation is a requirement to keep the post open. Luckily, Ed has a special knack for taking on projects and making them successful. He helped Gary and the Post put together a proposal for a project to completely renovate and update their building. He engaged other local volunteers like Don and Sherry Black and started working right away on the fundraising and renovations. The Post was able to raise enough funds to cover all the needed renovations, and Ed himself designed the majestic American flag ceiling in the fireplace room. The project was truly a total transformation of the Post inside and out with the exterior upgrades making a huge improvement of the downtown area where it is located. After the transformation of the post, the Legion is now more active than ever, and it is constantly bustling with some sort of activity. Legions are known for influencing considerable social change in their local communities, and with the hard work of Gary, Ed, and their group of volunteers, Fellows Post 63 will be influencing the residents of Taft for many years to come. Thank you.
please join us in congratulating Ed Gather and Gary Summers as a recipient of the 2022 Regional Award for Local Government. As I said in the, in the video, uh, in 2019, we were ready to lock the doors, uh, the post due to dwindling numbers of local veteran participation. Uh, the large majority of our membership was made up of World War I, uh, World War II, and Korean veterans, uh, which were, we were losing as they grew older and moving on to post everlasting. Our monetary reserves were nearly depleted. We were only getting a few vets and guests at our Friday night social gatherings. Ed Gaither approached me and, and the, the Post with some ideas on reimagining the Post in order to attract younger veterans. His father had been a member and had recently passed. Uh, renovations to the Post were going to be costly, and we devised a plan <coughs> excuse me, to approach the local businesses of the west side and the citizens and explaining the vision we had to attract more local veterans, younger veterans. Donations were happily accepted and over a period of eight to 10 months, we had received upwards of $40,000 to make the necessary improvements that we, we and Ed thought were needed to attract a younger veteran enrollment. <clears throat> With Ed's vision, imagination, countless hours, months, of hard work and with the help from local residents, Sherry and Don Black, uh, we were able to see the efforts rewarded with an increase in local veterans joining the post to boost our enrollment by a whopping 35%. <clears throat> new paint, new flooring, removal of old paneling, cooling heating improvements, murals, even the American flag hand stained by Ed, and to scale, covering the entire ceiling of one room of the new and the new exterior signage. The improvements paid off. In appreciation, we offered our local donors and volunteers with the opportunity to be honorary members. <clears throat> Those memberships are totaling nearly 200. Their participation enabled us to achieve a financial comfort so that we might continue to offer a place for veterans to enjoy the camaraderie of patriots and their guests. Through the hard work and the support of our community, we've been able to keep the Fellows American Legion Post 63 a viable, respectful venue for our veterans and guests to enjoy now <clears throat> and into the future. Thank you for this award. First of all, I'd like to thank the city of Taft for uh, nominating us for this award and for um, Kern Cog for um, Acknowledging that the worth the worthwhile effort that was put in for the um, uh, American Legion post 63 I'm just going to just tell a short story how I got involved I heard like Gary stated that They're getting ready to close and I did something I'd never do I wrote him a check <laughs> So I after I write, wrote the check I said I don't know if this is going to be a band-aid or it's going to help him from here on out to um, make it a success so after I had dinner here at a one of your famous Chinese restaurants, uh, Panda Express on Rosedale. <laughs> it's time for the fortune cookie. And I, I said, I believe in fortune cookies. <laughs> and it says, seek out a surface, service project that uplifts your community. And so I took that to heart. That's when I talked to Gary. We set forth an excellent marketing plan. You can put all the paint plaster and everything on the walls, but if you don't know how to market it to a younger generation, then it won't ever be accepted and it will go away like other service clubs. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Transparency in your local government is an essential part of serving your community, and the County of Kern provides this transparency through their local public television station known as Kern Government Television. Since 1997, we have watched major county board meetings from the comfort of our own homes. 
long before virtual technology became available. But our local public television station goes one step further and uses their platform to inform residents about various events and accomplishments happening all around Kern County. In October of 2021, Kern Government Television created a 10-minute weekly television program highlighting what's happening within the county and showcasing the great work being done by the dozens of departments that are serving this community. Weekly shows consist of future department updates such as the Kern County Sheriff's Peace Officer Memorial, Safe Halloween at the Kern County Library, and Mental Health Awareness Month activities, just to name a few. Around Kern County is an upbeat, informative show that not only educates our residents about their local government, but helps unify and boost morale within Kern County's workforce. It is rewarding to see all of the projects and events throughout our county that take hours of hard work and true dedication from county employees being recognized in this way. Thank you around Kern County for shedding light on all of these great efforts. This award to a group that commits so much time to the regional awards presentation and has done so for the last 20 years. Please help recognize Kern Government TV working hard tonight. Accepting the award is Ali Soper, Chief Communications Officer with the County of Kern. seen that yet and my team made it so thank you so much um, it is a true honor to stand before all of you tonight and accept this award on behalf of our entire team who makes around Kern County possible unfortunately they couldn't join me on stage because they're working this event but truly this award is you know it's it's for them um, I want to thank from the bottom of my heart Tom Turner Gabe Pena Tim Meyer and Anna Marie Odo around Kern County would not be possible without their creativity. I even caught Gabe tonight when he was supposed to be eating his dinner, getting more B-roll. So I also wanna thank all of our Kern County employees. This show really wouldn't be possible if they didn't open up to us and let us share their story. So we are so grateful for that. And last but certainly not least, I wanna thank my boss, Ryan Alsop, for believing in our team. His leadership has provided us with the support and space to turn a conference room into a TV studio, let alone a show. And finally, I want to thank our Board of Supervisors for always supporting everything we do. Thank you. Thank you. The operation of a demand response transportation service has traditionally been fragmented with each type of service doing only one task. For an organization the size of GitBus, managing their microtransit, ADA complementary paratransit, and their new non-emergency medical transport program existing on the same platform this way left holes and schedules and expensive, inefficient service in its path. Technology has finally come far enough to allow all of Git's transit services to be run collectively, effectively using one dispatch center, one call center, an updated app, and a single software platform to manage the entirety of service from a single screen. This concept might sound simple enough to those of us outside the world of Git, but is much more complex than it first conceived. Each of the various transit services offered by Git has different fees associated with the rides. This one-stop concept needed to manage the differing fees as well. Luckily, Git did not step into commingling without a great deal of research and partnerships with strong supportive agencies such as Token Transit, a public transit mobile ticketing service, and VIA, technology that enables partners to create end-to-end -end transit services. The whole process of commingling Git's demand response services has proven to be more beneficial than ever imagined. Git's marketing department quickly branded all the services under the on-demand label and starting January 2023, this service will be offered throughout all of Bakersfield. This will truly help with the first and last mile issues transit riders regularly face. To oversee the transition into this co-mingling concept, Git needed someone who understood the language of the platform and had the wherewithal to pull it all together and make it work. 
Robert Williams is that person, and with his commitment and persistence, Git is leading the way in its integration and is excited to share their experiences from this journey. Kern Cog congratulates the Robert Williams with Get Buses On Demand co-mingling program, and On Demand is an amazing thing for transit. Who would have thought that would come? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all very much. I uh, especially want to thank all of the officers and agencies uh, and members of Kern Cog uh, for this award. It's always nice to be recognized by peers and peer agencies. Um, I have a long list of people to thank who don't normally get thanked in something like this. Um, so I apologize a little in advance, but um, first off, I want to thank Karen King, uh, who couldn't be here tonight due to an agency uh, obligation. Uh, but without her to support this program from the top, uh, it never would have happened. Um, I'd like to thank my directors, uh, all the managers at the company, um, several of which are here. Um, they have helped this program in every aspect, and the program is grateful for that support. Members of the Golden Empire Transit Board of Directors who have helped us implement this product, uh, and especially Board Chair Cindy Parra, uh, who's sitting at the Bike Bakersfield table tonight, um, who started this entire process by simply asking the question, what is this microtransit thing? <laughs> Off we went. Uh, I'd like to thank the members of the implementation team who included members of just about every facet of the agency uh, from marketing to maintenance to information technology, uh, customer service, and operations. Um, the nice thing about this is that it allows us to approach this product, uh, the problems, the issues as a group working together as the agency. Uh, it has allowed us to celebrate wins and the progress as a true team. Uh, finally, I'd like to thank the operators, customer service staff, the dispatchers, and maintenance. Um, it is truly a group effort, and every member of the group helps us achieve our goals. Karen had wanted me to mention just a couple of small things. Uh, you know, we started this product as separate entities, and then we started talking about doing something better and more efficient, um, something uh, that, that actually um, fills in the holes in the schedules that we were having. And so this product allows us um, to do much more efficient operations. We've seen like 30% increases in the way we are doing things. Um, it helps us with the shortage problems that we're having with drivers and vehicles because we can put more people and transport more people around the city. Um, we believe this is the future of uh, demand response dial a ride and on-demand transit and are leading the country with our particular type of implementation. Just little Bakersfield, just headed off. We get calls about every week from all over the country and even internationally to talk about this product, this program, and it has, it has helped in transit to put Bakersfield on the map. Um, we are very excited to implement this product um, and anybody that would be interested in doing that, I think it's the future and, and you'll be seeing it all around in your agencies as well. Thank you again. You don't need to watch the evening news to understand the increased demand on our law enforcement these days. Regardless of these demands, there are fewer officers available to cover all the calls they receive, and numerous calls made to our local Bakersfield Police Department might not require the services of a police officer. However, they are still critical and require immediate attention. That's why the City of Bakersfield, in partnership with Kern County's Behavioral Health and Recovery Services Department, created the Mental Health Responder Pilot Program. This innovative program helps the city and neighboring communities strategically address the increase in mental health-related calls for service. Over the past year, the city hired mental health clinicians to work with dispatchers taking 911 calls and to help the city better respond to mental health incidents and emergencies. Rather than deploy a police officer, the behavioral health clinician first assesses the situation, provides their expert advice on what is occurring, and requests the appropriate resources. By listening to the caller's needs and addressing issues on a case-by-case -case basis, 
the city hopes to provide better service and resolve mental health incidents in a more timely and organized manner. Since its inception, approximately 76% of calls answered by the clinicians have been aided with a mental health response rather than a police officer. This pilot program contributes to the regional community by falling in line with three of the five fiscal year 22-23 goals set forth by the City of Bakersfield City Council, including promoting safety and resilience, improving the quality of life, and promoting an innovative and efficient city government. The project promotes a better regional community by listening to the concerns of the community, partnering with the county and community groups, and creating a culture of addressing mental health incidents with the care they deserve. By doing this, the region encourages individuals to engage and trust law enforcement to have their best interests in mind during some of their most delicate moments. This is a great program and, and we're very happy that we have it. Accepting the Richard A. Maxwell Award for Public Safety is the City of Bakersfield Police Chief Greg Terry and Director of Kern County Behavioral Health and Recovery Services, Stacy Kuwahawa. Well, thank you so much for this recognition. I, I would like to thank the city for nominating us and for funding these positions. And really thank you to Chief Terry and BPD for being a partner for us. We've been working together um, through our mobile evaluation team for the last 20 years and have really, this wouldn't have been possible without our relationship and partnership. This is truly an innovative idea. This is not happening anywhere else in California that I'm aware of. And when our staff, this wasn't my idea, I won't take credit for it, when they brought the idea forward to BPD, you guys were ready and willing and we got this going very, fairly quickly. It's been incredibly successful, it's very timely, and it's such an important service for people who are calling in a moment of crisis but don't need law enforcement. They need something else and it frees up our officers to be responding to the community in a meaningful way. So thank you to all, and I want to give Chief Terry a minute to talk. Uh, I'll never pass up a chance to do that. But again, thank you very much for the recognition, and, and I would echo what Stacy said, is very appreciative of the support that we've received from the City Council and the Board of Supervisors for this really innovative program that really is impacting people's lives. All of us, we're all here as part of this city and the county, and this is impacting all of our lives every single day. And so uh, I, I know that I speak on behalf of Stacy that we really accept this recognition on behalf of the men and women who are out there, even tonight, serving our community to make it safer and healthier for everyone. Thank you. Imagine the dream of someday having a lake-to-lake -lake bike path where cyclists, skaters, and pedestrians could enjoy a connection between communities to natural resources such as the Kern River and Buena Vista aquatic recreation areas. This dream became a reality in 2022, but the reality of accomplishing this was burdened with some extreme hurdles to overcome. With a project of this magnitude, there were a lot of environmental clearances that needed to be approved and county planning started this process back in 2003. They encountered significant scrutiny by the public for conflicting land use and species impacts. Without environmental clearance, a project of this magnitude cannot move forward, so it was initially dropped. Over a decade later, Michael Dillenbeck with county planning and John Parker, general manager with the Kern River Water Bank Authority, moved mountains to get the environmental phase approved, which took five years to complete. All phases of this project took innovative thinking, extreme sensitivity of adjacent areas, construction of tieback walls in a riverbed with Caltrans jurisdiction, and the unique design and construction challenges along with conservation easements were just a few issues. Kern Water Bank Authority saved the day when they offered the use of their habitat conservation plan. But even that required some changes to work, so they eventually added the county as a beneficiary to their plan. Michael was then promoted to a public works manager and inherited the lead for the right-of-way phase of the project. And go figure, more issues came up with property owners being deceased, 
and Caltrans denying the permit for construction along State Route 43. That's when John and Kern Waterbank saved the day again, letting the county use Waterbank property for that stretch of the construction. The headaches associated with this project were endless, but thanks to the diligence of Michael and John and their unique partnership, the county can now boast that we have the longest municipal bike trail in the United States. Kerngog congratulates Michael Dellenbeck and John Parker with the 2022 Ken Volk Award of Merit in Environmental and Conservation. And I can attest that it's a great project. I've been on it and it's a great amenity for the the County of Kern. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks very much. Thank you. So for project people out there that have to deliver these kind of large scale undertakings, you know, when you hear Riverbed, you think, oh, okay, this is going to be a challenge. And then you hear Conservation Bank, oh, okay, now we're talking. And then you throw Caltrans into the mix and it gets real exciting. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> but again, this is just a great example of what, you know, Kern County is about. Our new, our motto, grounded and boundless. It's amazing when you ground your projects in local communities and teamwork, the opportunities are boundless. This project started um, in the planning department, but was really driven by Supervisor Couch, and later when it became part of his district, Supervisor Skibner, who are both here, who provided all the support we needed to be able to get this project going, and whenever we needed help, you know, they knew the community, they knew the businesses in the area, um, so they provided that support. Uh, the project had nearly 20 different alternatives before we found something that, that was workable, and really that's where uh, John came in, and so I just want to let John say something. Oh, well, uh, thanks very much for the recognition, and um, I'm not Michael. <laughs> um, um, no, thanks very much for the recognition. We, the Kern Water Bank was just really pleased to be able to help out, help the county out to get this done. Um, I want to thank our board of directors. Uh, they were always, um, you know, all for the project, and it took some doing. I mean, we had to work through the wildlife agencies. We had to um, get a minor amendment to our HCP, which sounds like a minor thing, but it, they're really not that minor, let me tell you. Um, and so, like I said, uh, thank you very much for the recognition. And uh, Waterbank was just pleased we could help out and help get the project done. Thank you. The state of California has made it a mission to reach zero emissions on our roadways. Fossil fuels are known to produce air pollutants that harm our environment and produce smog and greenhouse gases. To help the state meet their goal, GetBus is leading the way in zero emission transit services by moving in the direction of hydrogen fuel cell technology and has just opened their own hydrogen fueling cell station. A fuel cell works by combining hydrogen and oxygen to produce electricity, heat, and water. It works somewhat like a battery. Both batteries and fuel cells convert the energy produced by a chemical reaction into usable electric power. When a hydrogen fuel cell electric bus operates, it only emits water. With the addition of the fueling station, Git has been able to purchase 10 additional hydrogen fuel cell buses. This is the first hydrogen fueling station in Kern County with liquid hydrogen, supporting compression, hydrogen gas storage, and a new hydrogen fuel dispenser. In order to bring this new technology to Git, they needed to make sure they understood what it all entailed. Chris James, Git's Director of Maintenance, was the person for the job. Chris jumped right in with both feet to learn all he could about hydrogen fueling and how to best bring this technology here to Bakersfield. In addition to adding the fueling station, Chris assisted in the development of the on-site solar plant to help offset the cost of operating the fuel station. It is true that it takes a village to get projects of this magnitude to fruition, and Chris did not work alone. However, he embraced the need for this technology and learned all he could to make sure it was done right. Gets new hydrogen fuel cell buses and state-of-the-art fueling station means cleaner air, less greenhouse gas emissions, and a healthier, quieter community for Bakersfield.
Please join me in congratulating Chris James from Get Bus for his work on bringing the first hydrogen fueling station to Kern County. Thank you, Chris. Well, the video pretty much uh, gave the history of this project. Um, I think what it left out was we ordered buses before we had an infrastructure to fuel them with, <laughs> which was a real challenge in the beginning. But um, we're making progress now with more buses on order. There's four more that are going to be uh, ordered this year, so that'll make a total of 14. The station was designed with uh, the support of about 30 um, hydrogen fuel cell buses. Um, I'm proud to say that station emits zero emissions as well and uh, does have solar um, connected to it, so there's no operating cost for that. Um, and if you don't know anything about the hydrogen buses, um, Bakersfield should be proud right now. We're proud of the technology. We're one, that station's only one of five in the state, um, and it's the only one in Kern County. So we're kind of on the leading edge here of. Um, of the technology, um, we're making that successful, but that's not possible without uh, our board support um, and the employees at Golden Empire Transit. They've, uh, Robert was up here earlier, and we were doing both projects at once, trying to get on the zero emission path and getting uh, the on-demand going. So it's been a busy time, um, but we're making great progress, and I look forward to the future. Uh, thank you again. Thank you again for the award. Appreciate it. There is a saying that charity sees the need, but not the cause. How difficult would it be to face the cause on a daily basis and overlook it to help with the need? That is what the Probation Auxiliary, County of Kern, otherwise known as PAC, does on a regular basis. PAC serves as a nonprofit public benefit corporation and works with deputy probation officers on a mission to provide probation youth with necessities that strengthen self-esteem, encourages participation in pro-social activities, and helps guide them toward success. To do this, PAC developed their Helping Hands program where a core goal is to build the youth's confidence by providing them with a SHOP bag. SHOP is an acronym for Support, Hope, Opportunities, and Possibilities. These shop bags are filled with hygiene items, clean and properly fitted clothing, including undergarments and shoes. It is hoped that with this increased confidence, the youth's desire to attend school will also increase. This increased school attendance will likely result in better grades and a reduction in recidivism rates as well as a reduction in probation violations. Another important goal is to deter youth from joining criminal street gangs and engaging in risky behaviors that may lead them to becoming victims of human trafficking. By steering youth in a positive direction and removing barriers, opportunities for success will increase, which will lead the youth to becoming more productive citizens, thereby making our community a safer place. To date, Helping Hands have seen some tremendous success. Since launching the program in August of 2020, they have received 227 referrals and provided 208 shot bags. Additionally, 37% of the youth served have successfully terminated from probation, and 53% have remained out of custody and have not committed a new law violation. These numbers further demonstrate the positive effect the program is having on the youth being served. The services provided have left a lasting impression on not just the youth that are served, but also the probation officers that work with them. Congratulations to Helping Hands as one of our 2022 regional Award of Merit Innovation recipients. Accepting the award is Mara Rivas with Kern County Probation Auxiliary. Oh, we have somebody else. And Wendy Gutierrez. And Wendy Gutierrez. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank the Kern, um, Kern Council of Governments for this award. It's truly um, an honor to be here tonight and to be recognized. Um, the video says it all. Um, our history, what we do with the youth in our community that are on, are on probation, 
what started off as a small idea between a group of probation officers working with youth on probation has turned into this great nonprofit organization um, that we call Helping Hands. And it's being recognized here today in front of all of you wonderful people. Um, thank you so much for the, it's a great honor. Thank you so much again for the recognition. Truly blessed. Thank you. This is an exciting time to be a student in the Kern High School District. Through the combined efforts of students, staff, community members, industry partners, and policymakers, all Kern High School District students are provided the support, encouragement, inspiration, and tools needed to succeed every day through a variety of programs available. One department that focuses completely on career preparation is the Regional Occupational Program, or ROP. One service of the ROP is the Regional Occupation Center, which provides opportunities to learn all aspects of a career, including professional behavior development along with the technical skills. In 2020, the Kern High School District added the Career Technical Education Center to the ROC in an effort to provide over 40 different pathways to high quality training in areas such as labs with industry specific equipment. Students can gain knowledge in specific careers such as robotics, engineering, animation, pharmaceutical tech, and video game design, just to name a few. They can even begin to earn credits toward their continued education at a college or university. None of this training would be possible without quality partnerships with local businesses and industries. These partnerships are a critical component of the student's success at ROC slash CTEC. The business partners provide guidance to the various programs so that the skills being taught are relevant to the industry standards. The college and university partners work with the program to ensure high quality pathways and a smooth transition to post-secondary education. The ROP is an especially important part of developing a well-trained workforce in our community, growing from 800 students in 2016 to over 2,400 students from more than 23 different high schools throughout Kern County and a wait list of over 1,200 additional students is evidence of a successful program. Great program. Please join us in congratulating Regional Occupational Program with 2022 Regional Award of Merit for Innovation. Accepting this award is Brian Miller, ROC and CTEC principal. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good work. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Uh, on behalf of the Kern High School District, uh, our superintendent, Dr. Schaefer, our deputy superintendent, Dr. McGee, uh, both of whom are here with me tonight, really like to thank the Kern Council of Government for the uh, recognition for this for the ROP program. Um, I'd also like to thank Michael Turnipseed for his nomination and his ongoing support of our programs. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you, um, you know, there's a lot of great people in the room tonight that are partners of ours, and the video talked about partnerships, um, and that really is a key foundation of what we do. I've been fortunate to be in this role for the last 12 years as an administrator at the school, and it is an amazing opportunity for students. Um, they come to us for a three-hour program a day during their junior or senior year. They get into a hands-on environment, working with teachers that come from the industry and can bring that skills, that uh, knowledge to them every day and they take off like rockets. Um, and the, the growth has been tremendous. As you've seen in the video, we went from 800 students to over 2,400 students now, and we're really making a difference in the community. Um, I'll just share right now is, is really the cool part of the semester because all the students, they learned all those foundational skills and now second semester, they're putting those to work in various settings, projects are going on. But the biggest thing that's going on right now is our internship program, which requires partnerships with businesses. So we have of over 2,000 students enrolled, over 650 of them right now are doing internships at over 200 businesses, which this is incredible for this community. So really wanna thank everyone here, thank our partners that are here tonight and our ones that are out there, uh, because this is really a great opportunity. It's an innovative approach for uh, education, and I, I will tell you, I've done a lot of traveling around the country, um, looking at schools, and what we have here in Bakersfield rivals anything around the country and is definitely one of the best, if not the best, in California. So thank you very much for the award, and uh, thank you very much.
Since the establishment of major brands including Home Depot, Tractor Supply, and most recently Walmart in 2019, the city of Tehachapi has established itself as a regional retail destination for much of eastern Kern County. While the incorporated population sits around 10,000 residents, the city is the retail provider for another 30,000 residents in the greater Tehachapi area and other communities in eastern Kern. Although there was plenty of empirical data to support this, real data of customer movements and proof was needed to sell other businesses on the viability of the market. In 2022, the city of Tehachapi partnered with Placer.ai to bring location-based artificial intelligence to their community. Using bots that are commonly installed within smartphone apps, Placer.ai uses a select number of visits to any geofenced area within the city and expands on it with the mathematical algorithm to provide an accurate picture of visits and other key data to businesses within the community. What does all of this mean? City staff can now run a variety of reports off this data to help tell an accurate retail story within the city of Tehachapi, showing that over 80% of the retail visits to some of the city's most popular businesses are credited to those living outside the incorporated city limits. This data has also assisted with recruitment efforts for new national retail and restaurant brands by providing a match analysis for the potential new business's target demographic specific to identifying a key location for that business to open. The successful launch of this data tool has assisted other departments throughout the city, such as law enforcement and public works. This has also been a tremendous resource to assist the many event planners coordinating the numerous festivals and gatherings Tehachapi hosts every year. While a small city, Tehachapi's cutting-edge innovation and their embracement of this new technology is assisting in providing a more accurate picture of their economic strength, market conditions, and general efficiency in planning and government operations. Kern Cog congratulates the City of Tehachapi with the 2022 Regional Award of Merit for Innovation. Accepting this award is Corey Costello, Assistant City Manager for the City of Tehachapi. Thank you. Uh, you know, there was a time uh, in economic development in Tehachapi, it was centered exclusively on the railroad, farms, and cattle ranches. And now when I am pri uh, provide investors with some of that information you saw about traffic counts, brand loyalty, visit metrics, void analysis, our vast trade area, and our complete economic profile of all the customers shopping down to what they like on social media, they look at me like I'm from the future. Um, you know, I grew up in Tehachapi, and I'm used to being the little guy. And you find out when you're a little guy, you got to find a way to level the playing field. And we found with this AI data that we've been able to do that. Um, a couple quotes that I wanted to share that kind of sum up this award, uh, both coming from uh, Ankar Waraku in his uh, book, Do Epic Stuff. And we'll use that word since this is being televised. Um, first, he said, you know, the awards we receive are never for us, they're for the positions we hold. And I think he kind of meant that as a slight for working for an organization, but you know, I really believe that with this team uh, at the city of Tehachapi. I want to thank them for sort of buying into my crazy idea that you know, location-based AI algorithms were going to have a benefit to not only economic development, but, but other city departments, and it continues to level the playing field. But Waraku went on to say that what you work on is just as important as how much you work on it. Frankly, even donkeys work hard. Working smart is the difference between a donkey and a human. <laughs> so I want to thank the COG for realizing it to have to be that we are not donkeys. Thank you. <laughs>
that helps prepare students to succeed in college and provides a study space for students while in school. In July 2021, the City of Shafter reached a series of agreements allowing for the creation of a new municipal library. Bakersfield College agreed to provide the staff to operate the library and the city would be responsible for library management software, book purchasing, and other operational costs. On January 18th, 2022, the new Shafter Library and Learning Center opened to the public as a new municipal library integrally connected to education from preschool through college. This partnership with the college and the commitment from the city of Shafter has attracted other philanthropic donations to continue with improvements of the space and expand the library collection. There is now an outdoor learning plaza a children's reading room, a new classroom, and six beautiful murals. These partnerships continue to blossom, creating fun but also endless educational opportunities for the children of Shafter. Congratulations to the Shafter Library and Learning Center as recipient of the 2022 Regional Award of Merit for Innovation. Accepting this award is Dr. David Franz, Education Partnership Director. Awesome project, really appreciate it. On behalf of the city of Shafter and our partners at Bakersfield College, thank you very much for this award. Um, as a staff, we are very fortunate to be able to work on this project. I think um, in government work, there's really nothing better than contributing to the freedom of your neighbors. And um, you know, all of us are, are at work trying to create safe spaces, places where people can learn, where they can work and, and have fun. And um, <coughs> libraries, well, and, I, and, it, and really pursue happiness, as the Declaration of Independence puts it. Um, and libraries, at their best, are places like that, and especially for children. Um, you know, kids spend a lot of time waiting for adults to make decisions for them about when to go, what you know, what we're going to buy at the grocery store. And libraries are places where kids get to do the shopping, where kids even get to do the checking out, where kids can go find a place to sit um, and pursue happiness through uh, the pages of a book. So. I had a, to give an example of this, I had a conversation recently with a 10 year old um, who was explaining to me how wrong I was about uh, preferring The Hobbit to The Lord of the Rings trilogy. <laughs> and, and I thought as I was listening to him, I thought this is someone who um, going forward is going to be very much at home uh, in a courtroom or in a boardroom <laughs> or in front of a classroom. And I think that those investments, in other words, are going to pay off for our communities going forward. A belief in young people has been a trademark of, of the city of Shafter, the leadership of the city of Shafter, and of the Kern Com Community College District um, in the work that, that we have done together over the years. And I want to acknowledge the outstanding leadership of our city manager, Gabriel Gonzalez, and our council, um, Mayor Chad Givens, Mayor Pro Tem Kathy Prout, council members Gilbert Alvarado, Pete Espinoza and Gustavo Olvera, as well as former council member um, Cesar Lopez, who were all a part of this project and really believed in us to, to get it done and make it happen. Also, I'd like to highlight Kern Community College District Romeo Agbalog, who was a real champion for this project from the beginning. So thank you very much for this award. A chief administrative officer has many responsibilities for a county the size of Kern. The person serving in this role does not only work for the 8,000 plus employees who work for the county, but also the more than 1 million residents who reside here. Ryan Alsop stepped into this role five years ago and has proven to be the epitome of a servant leader. From forming partnerships with community-based organizations to stand up mobile COVID-19 vaccination clinics for local ag workers, to installing new sidewalks and streetlights in Fuller Acres after hearing concerns from the community, Ryan is committed to ensuring our county continues to provide the vital services our residents rely on. Ryan has navigated some of the most challenging and complex issues in our county to date. He guided the county through an annual fiscal deficit of $62 million, carrying out a four-year strategic mitigation plan to proactively balance the county's budget and alleviate service level impacts on our community. 
He has invested in our public safety departments by improving compensation for our first responders, including the permanent transfer of property tax-based revenue from the general fund to the fire fund. This change brought the needed fiscal stability our county fire department desperately needed. Ryan is also changing the way Kern County deals with one of its most prevalent issues, homelessness. He spearheaded the construction of Kern County's first low barrier shelter, the M Street Navigation Center, taking a proactive approach to combating the root cause of homelessness by giving the residents there the tools to learn job skills, heal from addiction, and receive mental health counseling. Passion and commitment are driving forces behind what makes Ryan such an exceptional leader and worthy of this award. Frank Todd congratulates Ryan Ossoff with the Daryl Hildebrand Distinguished Leadership Award. And Kern County is glad Ryan Ossoff came here. Appreciate Thank you, it. sir. Okay. Well, thank you very much, everybody. Good evening. Um, I want to thank uh, the Kern Cog Board of Directors, Mr. Hakimi, uh, certainly all the Kern Cog staff for, for, for the recognition tonight. Um, my work begins and ends with the Kern County Board of Supervisors. And um, I want to thank them for their direction, their guidance, and the support that they give me in my job uh, every day. Uh, I've got a couple of my bosses here with me, Supervisor Couch, Supervisor Scrivener. I want to thank them for the, uh, the great honor, great privilege of being this county's uh, CAO. So I thank, I thank you both for that. Um, I want to tell you that uh, this rec recognition is really, um, is really a reflection on the county's employees. We've got thousands of county employees that do all of the hard work. We've got department heads doing all of the hard work. I would argue some of the most consequential work being done anywhere in this country today. Uh, and uh, you know, this recognition, they, they deserve this recognition. So really nothing without them. Um, my staff that's immediately around me, uh, without them, I'm just a dude in a suit, um, <laughs> really. And um, I wanna thank them. I have several joining me tonight, one of them left. Uh, uh, Jeff Hill, who's our Chief General Services Officer, Mark Bonera, who's our Chief Information Technology Officer, uh, Ali Soper, Anna Marie Otto, who works with uh, Anna Marie, obviously Tom, Tim, Gay back in the corner who are on Ali's team. Ali, uh, you've got one of the most demanding uh, communications jobs uh, anywhere in this county, and you are lights out, lights out on it. And uh, I want to uh, congratulate you for your, your award tonight. You, you deserve that, you and Anna Marie. So congratulations to your entire team. And uh, Jim Zerf is finally, who is our Chief uh, Operations Officer. Um, I, I can go on and on about Jim and his contributions to the county. Uh, but I'll, I'll say this, Jim is like your smartphone, um, and it, which is, you know, you, you really don't know what life was like or, or how you were able to get through a day or a week without one uh, before you had it. Um, so I appreciate you, Jim. Thank you for everything that you do. And last but not least, I have my wife with me. She's sitting next to me, Melissa. Uh, I want to thank her. We have four children. We still have one at home, 11-year-old uh, Owen. All the rest are out. One's still in college, but the rest are out doing their own thing. And I want to thank my wife for all of her uh, support and being the bright center of our family. Thank you very much. There are many characteristics that make up a strong leader and our region has been blessed to have many great leaders. For the city of Tehachapi, that great leadership is witnessed daily from their city manager, Greg Garrett. Greg has served the city in various capacities for over 20 years. In 2009, he was promoted as the city of Tehachapi city manager and is now the longest tenured city manager in Kern County. Greg's experience with the city has included several opportunities in which the community has experienced healthy growth while becoming a shining example of civic government in Kern County. Transparency with the public, award-winning projects, and staff have all played a role in showcasing the wonderful city that is Tehachapi. As city manager, Greg prides himself on working with staff to produce a balanced budget annually that includes reserves and critical city accounts. 
A constant collaborator, during COVID-19, Greg initiated weekly Zoom meetings with every other city manager in Kern County to compare response and preparation notes. Nearly three years later, these meetings continue today as city managers share best practices, compare notes on state and county initiatives, and even serve as simple peer support when needed. Most of Greg's management philosophies come from his extensive private sector background. Prior to entering the public sector, Greg led successful teams as the global projects manager at General Electric and the vice president at Scaled Composites prior to returning to his hometown and serving his community. His excellence in leadership and a strong track record of success has made the city of Tehachapi a major economic and tourism powerhouse in Kern County. Kern College congratulates Greg Garrett and presents him with the Daryl Hildebrand Distinguished Leadership Award. Thank you. I don't have any uh, quotes like Corey did, or I, you know, I'm not going to beat up on animals either. So I thought donkeys were actually part of winning the West. But uh, thank you to Kern Cog for this award. Uh, Daryl Hildebrand was was a great man and his namesake. This is a great honor to be standing here in his uh, in his name. Um, it's actually a pleasure to lead individuals that are professionals and driven to deliver world-class public service to our city. When we surround ourselves with intelligent people that excel in their professions, there is no limit to the improvements that you can make for the quality of life for your city. Thank you to our amazing city council, which are all five here this evening, um, all of which, um, are, are, again, are here, and understand and appreciate the value of teamwork and empower us to do our job daily. Thank you to Jay Schlosser for actually nominating me, it was, it was quite the surprise, so thank you, Jay. And I accept this award uh, on behalf of the city uh, employees for everything that we do collectively, um, obviously. And finally, thank you to my wife, Krizzy. She was sitting, she's sitting beside me. She's without her, like Ryan, without all of our spouses, I'm sure. You could never, you could never do what we do. It's, it's a 24 seven job, so thank you, Krizzy. And uh, thank you again for everything. God bless America. What is great leadership without the need for collaboration? When it comes to our children's education, collaboration is key for success, and the Kern County Superintendent of Schools has found an exceptional means of collaboration to help children find success from the cradle to career through their Kern Education Pledge, or KEP, initiative. Established in 2017, KEP is comprised of leaders from Kern's 46 school districts, institutes of higher education, the private sector, and the larger community who have committed to working together as one system to improve outcomes for all students as they move through the cradle to career continuum. Much of the work of KEP stays within seven work groups that focus on the following areas, kindergarten readiness, literacy, mathematics, college, and career readiness, post-secondary completion, chronic absenteeism, and data sharing. Through the work of KEP, a Kern integrated data system known as KIDS was formed, which ensured the sharing of student outcome data to assist all stakeholders in making informed decisions about what is best for the student, teachers, and schools. This secure kids data was instrumental during the pandemic in identifying the 73% of students who are eligible for free and reduced lunch and did not have regular meals, as well as the 40,000 students countywide who did not have internet access or devices at home. This information enabled the school districts to partner together in finding the critical resources to help our most vulnerable students. KEP has also assisted with creating strong relationships between the colleges, universities, and Kern County high schools to establish dual enrollment and early college credits, increasing the pathway for students to complete their post-secondary education. This collaboration enforcing the dual enrollment pathway has experienced a 600% increase in participation since 2015. Leadership of this nature brings out the best in not just the students, but the teachers, administrators, and community members who participate in the Governance Council. Great leaders are not born, but made with collaboration being a key ingredient.
Please join us in congratulating Current Education Pledge with the Daryl Hildebrand Distinguished Leadership. Accepting this award is John Mendeburo, Associate Superintendent with Kern County Superintendent of Schools. Such a great program, very important for the community. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for, to Kern Cog for this recognition. Um, I'm representing Dr. Mary Barlow, who was not able to make it here this evening, but wanted to thank foremost uh, Michael Turnipseed for uh, nominating us for this prestigious award and for um, recognizing us under the Daryl Hilbrandt as a legendary leader, and we're so very honored for this prestigious award. The Current Education Pledge, as you saw in the video, is a collaborative effort of 46 school districts here in Kern County, institutes of higher education, charter schools, and affecting more than 240,000 students in our county every single day. Because of this leadership, it is really those who are the leaders in the trenches. And with us tonight are many of the representatives of those leaders, I'd like to, re to recognize representing the Central Valley Higher Education Consortium and the newly appointed interim dean, or chancellor at Kern Community College, T Tom Burke, Ramon Hendricks, Superintendent of the Greenfield Union School District, Mark Luque, Superintendent of Bakersfield City School District, Katie Russell, Superintendent of the Panama Buena Vista School District. From California State University, Bakersfield, Dr. Lynette Zelezny, our pre the President, and Dr. Kristen Watson, Chief of Staff. From the Kern County Superintendent Schools Office, Amanda Frank, our Coordinator of the Current Education Pledge, and Steve Sanders, our Chief of Staff. And also representing on the current um, Governor's Council is Dr. Brian Schaefer from current high school district superintendent. Because of their dedicated work, they're the ones that are doing the work in the trenches and every single day our 240,000 students are ready to uh, grow up and become in the careers of the many things that you are here doing and being presented and recognized for tonight. So on behalf of the 240,000 students who are really why we are here, Thank you very much for this award and congratulations to everyone else who received an award tonight. Thank you. In our smallest communities lives a gym like no other. Cynthia Tonkin is that gym. And since the diamond is the strongest gemstone, then it's safe to say Cynthia is Maricopa's own diamond. Cynthia moved to this little town in Western Kern County from her home of Istanbul, Turkey in 1973. For the last 50 years, Cynthia has poured her heart and dedication into her new home and made a commitment to volunteer wherever she was needed. Coming to the United States, specifically to the small town of Maricopa, this young Turkish woman embraced the ways of her new country and became a citizen in 1986. In 1988, she became a member of Maricopa's city council and served in that capacity until 1993, the first time that is. She is a strong woman who is not afraid to voice her thoughts. She does not quit until she has all the facts, and she is relentless in finding the truth of a matter. Cynthia has truly fought for the city and has held its best interest at heart. If she ever felt anything was amiss, she would dissect every piece of information until she knew what the right answer was. Cynthia also served on the Board of Trustees of the West Side Mosquito and Vector Control Board for 12 years, in which she was given many awards for exemplary service and civic contributions to the community and Kern County. In 2003 through 2004, Cynthia held a position on the grand jury which helped take her leadership skills to a new level as she learned about the challenges as well as triumphs that other public agencies face, and then turned around and brought those skills back to Maricopa, where she held a high expectation of transparency in all the essential areas of city business as she was elected again to the city council in 2010 and served until March of 2022. Cynthia would never take the glory for herself, always reminding others that she is one voice of five. But her influence and knowledge have paved the road that will never be forgotten. And Maricopa is forever grateful that she chose our little community to call home. Turn Todd recognizes Cynthia Tonkin as the recipient of the 2022 Ronald D. Brummett Lifetime Achievement Award. Passion for your community <laughs> drives 
innovation, and better things. Thank you. Okay, um, I'd like to thank the Kern Cog for this wonderful award for my mom. And I'd like to thank John Crump for nominating her. And like she said, like the video said, she is a gem, especially in our family. <laughs> thank you so much. We live in a wonderful county with a lot of people, with a lot of passion. Innovation, compassion, and great ideas. And I'm glad we're here. This brings us to the end of our program. Please join me in one last round of applause for all of our recipients. Thank you for coming. And please ride your bicycles home safely. Thank you.